Perfect. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and, and get started then. Uh, my name is Megan Frutel. I'm happy to be uh, with you guys today. Thank you for joining. Um, I know most of you are already familiar with Noble and, and a part of it, so we appreciate you joining the call today. Um, but for, we're recording it, and I want to make sure that anyone that hops on understands a little bit more about Noble. So Noble is our network of owners, uh, business leaders, and entrepreneurs. Um, the focus is creating a space with committed leaders um, to integrate the kingdom of God into their businesses and lives. So through purpose, cause, and passion, which we talk about um, in our breakout rooms, um, and Doug says he likes to say they're, uh, you meet people and they're like your wolf pack. So people that you can communicate with that are um, kingdom-minded and fellow entrepreneurs. And really quick, just because it has it relates, um, we do a devotional every morning and um, it's actually Jeff Elder's book, who some of you are probably familiar with. But there's a verse today that we read that actually links back to a lot of what we do here at Noble. Um, and it's in Proverbs 3.13. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding, and without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. So that really relates in what we do here and creating that community um, and wolf pack of people that are like-minded because we all need people to turn to. So with that said, so today, I'm going to go forward here. So today is the Noble Knowledge Forum, um, but we do have the Growth, Leadership, and Abundance um, as well. Uh, let's see. So a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we do ask if you can um, turn on your video. Uh, we love participation in the chat. Susie and I will be monitoring that if y'all have any questions, and then feel free to take yourselves off of mute um, after the presentation. And uh, we will have our breakout sessions. They won't be recorded, um, but the rest of the presentation will be, um, and just kind of for flow today. So on the agenda, we are going to have um, our guest, who Chaz will introduce here in a moment. Um, there'll be about a 20-minute presentation, um, and then breakout sessions for about 45 minutes. We'll then come back together um, about 10 till one. Um, we're committed to staying on time. We know you guys are busy. It's the lunch hour. So we appreciate you joining us. Um, we'll let you get back to your day. Um, but without further ado, I'll have Chaz um, introduce Joe, who we're so happy um, is here with us today. Well, thank you, Megan. And welcome to everybody that's joining us today for our, for our Noble Forum. Um, Megan, I love that that you incorporated our morning scripture uh, verse in with the. Uh, it just fell into the, my lap. <laughs> I guess so. All right, I love, it. I love it, and it's a good verse. It's just uh, one of those great ones, and the whole chapter is uh, is fantastic as well. But uh, it's a pleasure for me today to uh, to introduce uh, Coach Joe. Uh, Joe Lorenz, um, you know, I lately I've only been seeing him at uh, Cigar uh, Lounge and uh, at an Ohio State football game. So having him having him join us uh, for a forum, uh, see him here too on occasion, but to have him come and speak is is uh, really going to be a a joy and a, and a pleasure to have you here, Joe. So so thank you for joining us. But a little background on Joe. Um, Grew up uh, in this area with uh, graduating from Franklin University, and uh, he's been a specialist with uh, EOS and traction, entrepreneurial operating system and traction, and a, been a leader uh, and ongoing with uh, with Vistage, and actually was a finalist for the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, which is pretty special. I've known a few of those people that have been awarded that Entrepreneur of a Year uh, award. And, and uh, those are some great people to be in company with. And being a finalist, I've never been a finalist. So, so hey, being a finalist is, uh, is quite a recognition. So, uh, Joe, we appreciate you being here today. And uh, transferable equity value is something I'm anxious to learn about. So, uh, thanks for being here. And, and, and you're on, buddy. Fantastic. Um, Susie, can you want to go ahead and I could share my screen, right? Oh. Go ahead and share from the bottom. You got that? Yep. So I could thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We good? Looks good. It's it's kind of, you see the workshop? Slide. Not yet. 
Share screen. Try this again. Thank you, Chaz, for the introduction. Uh, with me today, I'm going to continue to work on getting this uh, up here. But uh, with me today is a guy named Ed Wanke. Ed comes to us from, um, actually, he's in Westerville uh, from Rochester, um, but right, he's been in business evaluations for 40 years plus. And uh, we've partnered together to look at things from a, a perspective of growing your uh, proven strategy for growing profits and business value. So why am I circling around here? Hear me okay? Yeah, it's not loading, Joe. Yeah. You clicked on You're share screen. My screen. Difficulties. And then click on the actual, it'll show you your dashboard and click on the screen you want to share, but then you have to also click share. So this is Wi-Fi. He's frozen on my screen. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Mine just says he started screen sharing. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the little window, the video tiles above. Okay. All right, then. So, um, what we'll do is we'll we'll talk through it, and I'll get my deck up here in a minute. But uh, Ed, um, Ed, and I have been working now with uh, business owners, their business values, and uh, what specifically. Uh, this got me a little bit confused here. What specifically we're looking at is, you know, as much as you pra practice this. All right, there we go, share. Hey, there we go. Perfect, there we go. All right, sorry about that. You're good. Okay, so what we do is, uh, this is a workshop, we're abbreviating the workshop um, right now for purpose of, of, of 20 minute presentation. But what, what we do is we'll take through a take a group of business owners through a process of understanding three stages of, of growth um, drivers. And the two of us have partnered up with me as what they call a general contractor and Ed's the architect. So we come up with a plan based on input from the CEO and their leadership team and a what the market uh, valuation perspective and Ed's um, done many of all valuations, not only on exiting businesses, but also businesses that are midstream and looking to try to bring in perhaps a new shareholder, uh, perhaps it's, a, it's an evaluation of, a, of an estate. Um, so there's many opportunities to, to checkpoint along the way of where you are and growing your value. Particularly today, we're talking about transferable value and understanding why as a uh, startup or a mid-sized uh, company, why would you care? Ultimately, look down at helping CEOs, leadership create a must-have companies. So we could talk about a must-have company in a minute, but the whole idea is how do you make your, make your company more valuable and some strategies around uh, partnering and understanding what really drives value at the back end. Slides. Next slide. Okay. So you're the CEO. Of a, of a business. This is not advancing for me as well. You want to stabilize cash flow. You want to make the business easier to run so you can focus on growth, but you don't know how. Maybe you've tried marketing programs, create a strategic plan, work through your people, or try to break through but mostly you're stuck. So when we talk about this, who do we talk to about getting unstuck? In our uh, research, working with a group called uh, Growth Drive, um, what they've discovered is a 62% of the CEOs want to grow the business, 21% want to make it easier to run, and 17% want to sell, but not enough value. Ed, when we talk about this, um, what percent of the, of the deals that go forward uh, don't make it out? I think it's one out of five actually make it out of, of a potential sale. 
I think um, one out of five uh, get to a potential sale, uh, but the bottom line is, is that only um, 10 to 15 percent actually get closed when you bring them to the table. So if you're looking at 20 percent get out to be acquired um, of that 20 percent, only 10 percent or two or three deals get actually closed. So there's a lot of um, desire by the owner to sell, but they don't have enough value. And the problem they have is value may be comprised in two or three areas. One of them being it's the owner. If the owner is gone, there's no value. So, you know, it's great to be indispensable, but you also create a no value. If you leave, there's no value to the business. The second thing is, is that um, do you have a process system and a position where you can operate your business successfully um, and can it expand beyond what it is right now? Well, transferable value says if it's not transferable or movable someplace else, it may not be very valuable. And last but not least, um, do you have some uniqueness that allow um, a buyer uh, and who have a significant interest that maybe serves another segment of the market wanting to have a desire to take a look at you? Okay. We'll come back to those points and then we'll drive them home. There's some things you could talk about in your breakout sessions in a few minutes. So, you know, really understand why you want to grow your businesses and get really clear about what that is, uh, is very important. And we discuss that with our clients and getting clarity about that beyond, beyond just, just to make additional money. You know, what are some of the long-term growth plans? What are some of the aspirations you have for the business going forward? It's important to have your story um, being told. So you want to... Stabilize cash flow, make business easier to run so you can focus on growth. So this slide here is somewhat busy, but we've talked about the, the growth, you know, CEO goals, top, they want to grow, they want to make it easier to run and prepare to sell. Uh, and prepare to sell doesn't mean that's going to be tomorrow. It could be 10 years from now. But the idea is that if we have a must-have company, you're putting yourself in a position where it's a work-optional lifestyle, right? And a small startup, you, you're basically, you're the guy. But over a period of time, you need to leave that back in your mind that you want to ultimately measure of success is to have predictable equity value or predictable, what we're saying, transferable value. So we're going to talk about that. There's two other categories. Uh, you got to have the launch pad for growth is have predictable profits and cash flow. If you don't have that, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to survive what you need to do. So it's even a small startup. You gotta understand what are the strategies we're going to talk about in a minute that will give you that predictable uh, profits and cash flow, and then ultimately have predictable revenue growth, and then all those feed into the predictable equity value. Anything else you want to uh, mention on this slide, Ed? Uh, I, I think the biggest thing uh, in an early stage of business, and that is just to make sure that um, a business is focusing on cash flow. Don't do work and lower prices just to secure the business. Um, my overall guidance there is value what you do and price it appropriately and do not undercut your own value by lowering the price to secure a business. Okay. So, we talk about the dimension of growth. Once again, it's somewhat a busy slide, but the idea being is if we could follow this. If you've got a business that you know um, has EBITDA of 1.7 million, and you have a multiplier of two, your your valuation is going to be a three and a half million dollar business. But if you could double the volume, look at that going to a 3.4, and it can use these numbers even smaller, but bigger. Um, the idea being is double the volume and then work on your multiplier. In this particular case, a business owner needed $20, $20 million to sell his portion of the company out. And in order to get there, he had to not only double the, um, the, the EBITDA, but then work on the... Um, work on the other growth measures to be able to have a stronger 
uh, multiplier, the 6x to the 20, okay? So we have a whole process we go through to understand how to get there to your exit magic number, um, so to speak. But um, that's that's what we talk about in the um, the uh, growth drive conversation. So we can look at it from a three-dimensional, just cleaned up a little bit, transferable value, you got market position, financial records, shareholder value, profits, cash flow. What all comes back to, you look at the lower right-hand side box, excuse me, left-hand side box, you're going to say, you know, it's senior leadership, people, reoccurring revenue, uh, and then the growth side of it. So this is a profits and cash flow is your ability to generate cash. The growth side of it is to generate the sales. And with that and at profitable sales, then that transferable value um, uh, becomes a reality. Add anything on this one? Nope. Let's get to the next one then. I'm anxious. Okay. So we got predictable transferable value is what we're going to talk about today. And, you know, and, and Ed summarized a couple points earlier that we wanted to bring, come back to. Um, okay. Uh, you talked about what's your core competency, what's your definable target markets, and then confidence and delivery of your promise on a consistent basis. I, I think that's that's one of the things that um, we identify for potential value calculation, and that is um, what is going to be the core competency of your particular business? What's unique and makes you so special that you can be an effective business? Uh, and just because you love it doesn't necessarily make it an effective business. It's got to make sure that there's some something out there that consumer either another business or um, shall I say individuals, um, homeowners or, or individuals want to buy it. And then the second thing is define the target. Who are the clients that you really want to target at in order to have them become a client of your business? And then once you've gotten them as a client, how do you make sure that they're satisfied? And that is make sure that you tell them what you're going to do, do what you tell them you're going to do, and check back with them to make sure that that meets their expectation of what they thought you were going to do. Uh, the, the classic example is, is that a lot of people think that once they do the job and they walk out, the classic example of a plumber who, you know, just fixed the, um, you know, the, uh, shall I say, your garbage disposal, walks out of the house and said, well, it's a, I got it installed, all set, goodbye. You turn the, and you go to turn the water on and you find out there's no water. Well, he shut it off when he was doing the work, but he forgot to turn the water back on. Well, who knows where to turn the water on? Did he go back to the main entrance of water to the house or do it? Did he just shut it off in the kitchen sink where the, the, that is located? So you got to go back and check with your client at the end of the work and say, Mr. Customer, Mrs. Customer, whomever, did we deliver to you what you expected? because that's the big thing that separates those who continue in business from those who don't. Okay, let me ask you, this is the question uh, that I had uh, come up is, uh, you know, when you're trying to get a growth and you have to go outside for help, either friends or family or, or you know, institutional guys, I mean, the core competency, why is that so important uh, when it comes to trying to get others on board? Uh, the biggest thing is, is that you have to demonstrate how you do what you do most effectively. And so you have to have a process and system in place to demonstrate your core competency and how you apply it to each client opportunity. Um, a classic example is, is that, you know, people who say, well, I wash cars. Well, you drive through the car wash. Well, if you go through the car wash and they just say they wash the car, well, at the end, you have then spots all over because they didn't dry it. OK, so the next one says, OK, my car wash does more than just wash the cars. It'll dry it. So you get dry it, but you said, but now I got water spots. So the next one says, I'm going to put in spot removal on it. So that's the next thing you say, oh, that's perfect. Another one says, but I don't like it. Look at my hubcaps are dirty. And so oh, we got to add hubcap cleaning as an add on to it. 
And then the next person says, is that, but my back windows didn't get clean because you didn't do anything with the back because the angle's different. So then we got to put another piece of equipment in place that now sweeps across the back of the vehicle in order to get it to clean off the dirt that's on the back of the car. So when you talk about core competencies, you got to make sure that you've got a comprehensive understanding of all aspects of what you're going to bring to the market. Yeah, and then so the number two, definable target markets. Why why is that important? Isn't everybody our client? Uh, that's the problem that most people start off with, and that is um, a, a, a good example is if you look at um, a retail operation, um, uh, any beauty salon. Is the, isn't every beauty salon, every female in that neighborhood, aren't they all probable clients? And the answer is maybe, but how do you get that list and how do you secure that information and how do you get the message out to them? Well, you got to identify, is your salon targeted towards mature ladies that have that type of um, hairstyling necessary? Or do you want young up and coming people? So somebody in their 20s, 30s or 40s that may have a more avant-garde, uh, you know, what's the style of your service that you're going to deliver? So as you look at who the tar ideal target is, that helps you to a, a better facilitate. How do you go after that group and get uh, and secure more business from that specifically definable target? And we got about, uh, looks like maybe six minutes left in this um, conversation. And I think one of the things that we talked about, going back on the slides to the um, conversion of things to your um, core comp or your uh, transferable value, right? So um, as we look at this, your business story, um, predictable transferable value um, of, these, of these eight here, and we have, we just talked about those three things that are from an early stage company important. Um, is there anything else from here on these eight things that we look at and we uh, measure, uh, we interview the CEO about their uh, strength in these areas? Is there anything else that you want to mention? Um, the, the issue sometimes is brand, but if depending on how you want to set up your business and how it's operating, brand most often should not be tied to um, a discernible um, limited source. In other words, so if you want, if you're going to be out marketing to uh, consumers, uh, you, you'd like to have a brand that identifies what you deliver in your brand message. So that's an effective methodology. Um, a classic example is I'm working with a group that does landscape services and they call themselves fine landscape services. Okay, well, fine landscape services sounds really neat. Um, and then you discover that their tagline is, we deliver high-end results to every client. So their tagline makes their business. So if you look at who they're, customer is or and what they target in the market they target customers that are going to be discerning customers that will pay a premium for um, a, something very unique and custom designed and explain to me um and, and i think we've talked about this before is partnering up with in the early stage company partnering up with a, lar a larger uh, you know champion or or, or a uh, uh, promoter of you and um, how important is that on an early stage um, mid-sized company? Um, uh, the, okay. the hardest thing for most um, early companies is that if you try to lead and do everything on your own and move a business forward, the growth of the business is limited by the strength of the individual's energy and how long does it take for an individual to get exhausted. Um, you know, you can, there's 24 hours every day and there's seven days a week. Now the question is, how many hours can you put in and how effectively can you be during those hours that you're putting in on it? And so our thought is on um, that is to help you to start separate and step back and find out 
to be successful operating the business that I'm operating, what are the core things I have to be doing every day in order to be successful in taking care of my other employee, if you have employees, the customers that we're servicing, and how do I go about making sure that all of that leads to more customers for me in the future? And the struggle in the early stages is a diverse mix of clients without a focused list of clients. And I think that's the number one thing to take the time and look at, and that is um, who are who are the prospects that have said yes? How many proposals or people or contacts or, or sales of product have you made? How did the people pick up and learn about your particular product? Where did they see it? How did it happen? We got this all this um, social media and electronic um, uh, communication systems out there right now, but does your product require some better and more comprehensive understanding in order to make a purchase? So it's not good just to put a, uh, put a product and get Amazon to sell it or somebody else to be um, uh, sell it on one of the uh, multiple sales channels that are out there today. You wanna make sure that you're in a market and in a niche that says that this group targets the type of client that normally buys that type of product. Uh, a classic example is one that I've recently gotten that promotes all kinds of uh, free, female items uh, on my computer. Well, I haven't had to buy a female item for me for a long time. So I found that, that every ad that comes in from that company, I X out and I block it completely on my computer. So you got to make sure if you're doing electronic marketing that you have a defined identification of your prospect and make sure that you're targeting just that niche. Don't let it stray. And as somebody comes in and says, oh, I can help you get a, your message out to 20,000 people. You don't need 20,000 because you couldn't handle the customer base like that. Even if you get a 1% saturation, what are you going to do with 200? What are you going to do with 200 people? You can't yeah. deal with 200. You yeah. want, you know, what I want is I would like to five or 10 meaningful clients. Okay. So um, what we're, what we're suggesting are, and what I hear you saying, you know, what's your core competence, understanding what that is uh, early on and, you know, define the target markets, uh, the clients, maybe look at some partnerships with uh, larger people that you could be a subcontractor to. Uh, and then when you do deliver, make sure you're, you're consistent on delivering that because that becomes your, your best source of, 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 um, uh, inexpensive um, marketing is the satisfied customers you have and um, really relying on that. So, you know, you only have so many bullets in the chamber um, and, um, you know, precious, precious customers you have, make sure that you deliver on that brand. And uh, we alluded to something later on, but um, we do do an online assessment here and we will have that available um, as a follow-up. Suji is going to send that out to you. And when you do click on it, uh, it'll take you to a assessment where you can actually do some real-time understanding of where your business is. And, um, and, and if you have three numbers, you need three numbers. They need the SIT code, SIC code, uh, um, and then the um, your total volume and sales, and then your net profits. So you can come back with a... Um, a really good assessment on where where we you know where we predict the uh, businesses based on those three metrics. So um, feel free to explore that. It'll be included in the package going out. So we're going to go back to Susie here. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. Um, let me see real quick. Stop sharing. It says stop sharing. I'm going to defer to Megan to lead Q and A. Get it back. Yep, we're back. Perfect. Okay, and I'll um thank I'll start you. screen sharing thank mine you. here in a moment. Yeah, thank you so much, both of you. That was amazing. Now we'll leave it open for a couple of minutes um to any questions, comments. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna pull up.
I do say that having more valuable clients really makes a difference in the business. And I have raised prices recently on a few things and, you know, raising to the bottom is not something you want to do. And I realized that there's other competitors out there that were higher priced. And I was like, why am I at this lower price? And I still seem to be getting business. So. I think the comment I would observe there is that um, people that have been around in, in a business for a period of time, they automatically increase prices. No matter what's going on in the world, they raise prices. So their foundation for price increase is that they want to become a scarcer commodity and only the people that buy it really appreciate how good it is. And so that's one of the things that um, uh, in my early days when I was doing evaluation on a project, um, one of the persons said to me that I was the lowest quote on a particular project. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I withdraw my quote and I doubled it. And I said, well, I don't like to be the lowest. So if I double it, how, how would that make me? And he said, well, you're not even at the top yet. But that gives you an idea when you're doing things that you've got to figure out what price do you need to charge for product or service that's going to bring you the return that you need to continue to sustain and can grow your business. Yes, I highly agree with that. And there's a lot of growth for me to figure out. So I appreciate that comment. And there's a lot of scared um, you know, people, business owners that are really afraid to raise prices. Um, and so many times they just don't, they just going to absorb it and not look at it as a business as an investment. So what we're trying to do is get people to be less of a business, be an owner, but owner operator move to an owner investor. So understand that, you know, you probably have the riskiest piece of your portfolio. Most business owners, 80, 90% of their wealth is tied up into the business. So how do we get them to think about that as exposed capital at risk and get the return that you need to do? And if you're not getting the return, you know, maybe you need to be investing in something else. Um, but understand, most of the time, you just have a J-O-B. And, you know, moving from a lifestyle business to truly an investment is part of our of our mission is to understand that, you know, you can move this, treat the business as investment, demand the return that you have on your capital, and, um, you know, and, and in turn, make sure that you're running a business at a profit um, and or, you know, in what you consider to be a reasonable return on your investment. Um, you need to make that decision on what the reasonable return is, but we're here to help you think through that um, and, uh, and be in a position where you can help others outside the community and be a giver back to building large kingdom um, uh, and using that, using the business as a vehicle to get um, your, you know, assist the messaging that across the, uh, you know, across your platform. So um, it's important to make sure that we, we, we are not only surviving, but thriving and, and being able to effectively message, get a message out to what we're, how we're trying to build a community, so. Very nice, thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, I think on current slides. So I believe um, Susie's creating uh, two groups. So we're gonna jump into our breakout session here. Um, and in each group, um, we just ask that you assign an integrator and timekeeper. Um, we're going to have about 45 minutes come back together at about 10 till 1. Um, and Susie will do reminders. So you guys will get like a five minute, two minute. Um, but you'll assign that integrator and timekeeper uh, for the introductions. You'll each uh, have a chance to share your name, business, purpose, cause, and or passion. Um, and then an issue you want to discuss with the group. Um, and then there'll be a seven minute per person or on average, you'll kind of just to see how it goes, but um, a discussion portion uh, where you're going to provide more context about uh, your issue in detail, um, ask, you know, qualifying questions from the group, share experience. It's all about working together and kind of helping through business issues and um, 
sharing. And then uh, we just say, you know, it's a safe space. So be aware of your verbiage come from, you know, place of, I um, speak from experience um, and I will allow. So Susie, do you have those groups ready? Yep. I'm going to pause the recording and then send you to your groups. Thank you. All the input. Thank you so much for all the input with, uh, with each other um, and, uh, and sharing your thoughts. Uh, we kind of diverted a little bit and just went ahead and gave everybody, uh, brought everybody together, which obviously then, but it was, I think, good to learn from different people's circumstances and, and uh, their needs and, and that kind of thing. Uh, is there anybody that has any closing questions? We just have a couple minutes left. Is there anybody that has any closing questions for, uh, for Ed or Joe? Your mic's off, Joe. I'll say not much of a question, but I just want to thank Ed and Joe. It's a very good presentation. And uh, hopefully we can get access to that um, spreadsheet that you guys had up there. So I'm a very data-driven person. I really liked a lot of the slides that you guys had. Okay. I did include in that uh, chat there, I just posted it to the, uh, that you can click on there and uh, do your assessment or your um, you can offer that up to someone who's interested in hearing more about how um, you know to work on your on your on, the, on your um, strategic value of uh, so that's that's included in a uh, chat right now and we'll send a um, a deck out um, through Susie I'll send it over to Herbert and she'll be able to get it out to people thanks Ed for helping out you're welcome glad to have uh, hopefully provided some information that people would like.